I'm speaking with Allison Jones, who is the educational coordinator for the South Carolina Botanical Garden. And Allison, you um, usually are doing projects with children, and one that you're going to talk to us about today is one that you've done a lot with them, and it's making art using collected plant leaves or flowers and somehow transferring that pigment to the background. What do you call this? Um, we call it plant pounding. Sometimes folks will call it leaf or flower pounding. Um, but yes, so plant pounding using um, leaves or flowers and a hammer to, to get those pigments out of the plant part and onto the surface you're working on. And what are the different surfaces you can use? Do you use um, a t-shirt or a piece of fabric or paper? What's the best, or are all those accessible? Those are all good options. And so particularly if you're working with children, um, I would suggest using um, paper because um, it's, it's easy. If they make a mistake, you can easily toss that one, get a new piece. But um, if you use paper, I would suggest a thicker paper. So like a cardstock or maybe even a watercolor paper, those would work really well. Um, but as far as fabric goes, you can use um, fabric as well. Okay. And if I have fabric, do I want something brand new or do I want something that's um, maybe doesn't have a lot of sizing left in it? What would you suggest? Yeah. So if you're using fabric, um, obviously if you're using a fabric item, like in, in this case, I made a t-shirt. Okay. I used an old t-shirt of my daughter's that was stained. I sort of upcycled it. And so my option was limited. That's the t-shirt I had, but it's hundred percent cotton. So it was a good option. Okay. Um, if you're using fabric though, for like a decorative item, like a table runner or a piece of wall art, again, you just want to get something that's hundred percent cotton and yes, washing it in advance can help. Um, just to make sure that there's there's no nothing on it that's going to interfere with the dye absorption or the stain absorption, I should say. So no stain um, resistant fabric. That's right. That's right. <laughs> we're going to try to stain it with the colors in the plant material that we collect. Exactly. Right. Yeah. How do we go about collecting the plant material? What do you suggest looking for? Sure. Okay. So you're going to, of course, be limited, you know, depending on what area you're in, but definitely leaves work well. Just the, the, the green, the chlorophyll coming out of the leaves tends to work really well. But I know in the case of my daughters, they wanted most all flowers <laughs> when they did their project. So with the flowers, of course, you know, you tend to pick something rich in hue thinking that will transfer. And usually that is the case, but it isn't always the case. Sometimes those really rich hues are some of the ones that fade more, but no matter what, you're going to get, um, you know, a pretty result. To, it's going to be maybe darker or lighter, but you'll get to see as you experiment. And I do suggest that if, if you are a person or who is working with a child who's really attached to a certain design idea, or you are as the adult working on the craft, that you experiment with pounding those leaves or flowers first. See what they do before you make your final design. Good advice. Good advice. <laughs> so um, do I want to dry the plants or do they need to be fresh? How would you select them and store them? Yeah. So the best thing to do actually is to collect them as close to when you think you have time to do the project. So now, again, if you're selecting from like a remote location and then you're going to work on them at home, you can certainly keep them fresh with water and do the best you can. But the goal is to have them as fresh as possible because then that way they're going to retain moisture and the pigment will be able to be released more easily. All right. So I've gone out and I went out early and to my friend's house because she has a lovely garden and I've collected some things and I've got um, I'm going to use a piece of sheet um, that's been washed a good bit. And so now what what's the next step? Absolutely. So it is pretty simple. So you're going to gather up your uh, plant materials. And the first step, well, the, the first step is really making sure you have what you need to work with. So you're going to need like a cutting board or even just a hard piece of wood. OK, because you need something hard to be able to hammer on top of. OK, so um, I would not suggest a like a split wood bamboo type of cutting board. You don't want to crack your cutting board, but a solid piece. OK. 
Um, so you're going to get that and maybe a towel. You can put that up under and that will kind of dampen the noise a little bit for you. And you can use a cutting board or a piece of wood like this. You can either set it in your lap to work on to pound your leaves uh -huh. um, that a lot. Um, or like for children, that's a little unwieldy. So it's easier to put it on the ground and let them just hammer over top of it. But you're gonna take that piece of fabric and lay it on top of your cutting board. And then you're gonna, the first step is to arrange your design. So make your leaves and flowers and so forth and design you want. Once you get to that point, you may notice that there are some pieces you need to trim off. So just take your scissors and trim those a bit. And then you're gonna use um, tape. Masking tape would work or painter's tape will work. Um, to secure those into place. Because if you don't, that first jarring hit of the hammer is going to just wobble everything around. So you're going to use the tape and you're going to go around the, the edges of every uh, leaf and flower until you have the entire design covered how you want it. The only thing that is really different is that with a t-shirt, you're going to be you know working on the front surface of the t-shirt in order to get to the back side, you're going to have to turn your shirt inside out and then lay it down. And in order to protect the back of the shirt, if that concerns you, because pigments can ble will bleed through if you don't, you can just put some paper towels or even a hand towel inside the shirt to keep the front surface from bleeding to the back. Um, and it's as simple as just you continue to pan. You can kind of work from the edges of a leaf or a flower inward and then once you have it all done turn it over and reveal um, what you have under that tape and if you're doing it on paper don't uh, this is something I haven't mentioned but on the paper before you put down the tape you're going to put down a layer of paper towel and then you're going to use the tape so you won't require as much tape you're going to use the tape just to hold the paper towel down and to secure the leaf or flower down that way um, and so um, that's how you'll hold it. But again, we use painter's tape. We got a few little tears here and there, but it was nothing substantial. So you really do want to tape the plant material down well, because you're going to really be whacking away on it. So you got to right. cut the whole thing with yeah. the tape. Is that correct? Yeah. So the more elaborate your design, the more you're going um, to need it to be really taped down in place. So for the for the T-shirt that I made, I taped down everything all the way, very secure before doing any pounding. With a paper project, though, you can easily do one section, you know, take that off and move on to the next section. But certainly once you turn that shirt inside out to go back and forth and back and forth, you wouldn't be able to keep your design. Right. And then you really just use a hammer like you would hammer a nail in the wall? Yes, a, uh, just a steel, you know, headed hammer. A, a lot of folks, I think, think to themselves, oh, maybe a mallet would be better, right? But actually, you won't get enough of the pigment out that way. You, you want that, um, that hard metal surface to use. And you just start at the outside pounding and mm -hmm. you hit each section just like, once and then try to overlap and move around in concentric circles moving towards the middle? Yeah. So, well, the way the way that I would do it is you kind of know roughly in your mind where some leaves or flowers are that you've placed. So you try to kind of locate one and you will be, you'll start to see where the margins are. And so what I suggest is start at the margins. If, if you're working on one flower in your big design, start at the margins of that flower and yeah. then Start working your way in, and then that what will happen is you'll kind of see when you're done because you're going to see pigment coming through on the working side too. So you're going to start to see that that image appear, and and you of course you don't know for certain what you got until you open it. So you just want to try to do your best to judge. It looks like enough pigment has gone through. Um, kids are sometimes tempted, you know, to just whack here and whack there, and they don't get as thorough of coverage, so they they get almost like a a dashed or polka dotted effect rather than the whole um, botanical image. So you want to kind of remind them, complete the whole thing. And that's why it helps to kind of spiral inward. Do I need to set it in any way? And does it make a difference if it's on paper or on fabric? How? What's the next step I need to go through? 
Okay, so if you are making a piece that you want to be able to wash, okay, know first and foremost that these um, stains are going to fade over time. That is going to happen. But to make them last longer, yes, you need to try to set the stains. So one way that you can do that is you can use an iron and you can just iron the stains in, okay? So you're trying to, instead of trying to, of course, you know, get out a stain with cool, don't use hot, you're trying to set it with that hot temperature. If you want to take it a step further, which is what I tried, because I wanted to, to see, you know, how uh, I, well I could get it to set in, um, I used a method that I read about from a, a quilter and an artist who uses leaf pounding in her quilts. Her name is Betty uh, Kimbrell. And what she does is she uses a mixture of vinegar and water. And after her leaf pounding is complete on her fabric, she'll then place her fabric in that bath and let it sit for a little while to help um, set the fabric, to help it um, to retain the color for a longer period of time. And obviously, if you're going to be washing the fabric, again, you're going to be doing it very gently. You're going to want to hand wash it. Um, and I've heard... Um, in, in kind of researching this, folks say, well, I don't worry about it. I just throw it in the wash and what comes out, comes out. So you always have that option. Mm -hmm. You just have to be prepared that you could lose a lot of your work. So setting it with what I did was set it with an iron first and then put it in a um, water and vinegar bath for about 15 minutes. I let that hang up to dry. And then I did a hand wash with just um, a gentle detergent, a hand wash in the sink and had my final product. And did you heat the water and vinegar solution or was it just room temperature? That's a great question. I just did room temperature for my solution. Mm -hmm. And then if we've used paper, um, do I, I, I wouldn't be ironing the paper, I don't suppose. Do I just go ahead and frame it? No, yeah. So once you're done with your paper, you just kind of let it dry. One thing um, though to note is that when you lift up your paper towel and your tape from your paper design, when you go to look at that, sometimes you'll notice that there is some debris left from the petals or the leaf. So sometimes you, your first inclination is going to be to kind of scratch that away. But I will warn you that usually that's okay. You can clean it up a little bit, but take care because sometimes leaving a really thin film of tissue creates a really beautiful design. And if you remove it, you can remove a lot of the color and prettiness with it. So, but once you are done pounding the paper designs, that's the last step. You, you're ready to go. And truth be told, if you're just using um, a plain swatch of fabric, what we've done many years, like this one, I did not set this. I pounded, and then this is about six or seven years old, and I never did any setting. I just was done. I framed it. I knew I would never wash it. And it's lasted for years. I just think I'm going to have to um, get my hammer out. And I'm so glad you told me about the mallet because I had a mallet. And I was thinking <laughs> that's what I should use. But I actually will use my hammer. And, yes. uh, and I will um, try to um, not do it while my husband is, is likes to sleep later than I do in the morning. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a very noisy project. And for, for a lot of children, that's part of the fun is they get to really get loud with a hammer. Well, um, you have opened up ways that we can explore our backyards more and have um, wonderful experiences with our children or with our friends and then have memories of those experiences to keep. Thank you so very much for sharing another great project with us. Thank you so much for having me, Amanda.